Our final speaker for the morning session will be Fr Frank Oviedo. Frank is the Assistant City Manager for the City of Santa Clarita, and he'll be talking to us about seeing the good in government. Frank? Thank you. Good morning. So today I want to talk to you about seeing the good in government. It's everywhere. You just have to know what to look for and where to find it. And I'm telling you this at a time that the federal government is, their approval ratings are at an all-time low. State governments aren't far behind. But at the local level, there's a lot of good things happening every day. Many of you drove here on roads and walked here on sidewalks. Many of your kids even participate in some of the recreation programs at your community, here, whether here in Santa Clarita or some other city. It's happening all around us. And at the local government, it's happening the most. So I'm going to break things up a little bit, and I'm going to start this way. I want you to, we're going to play a word association game. I, I want you to close your eyes just for a second, and I want you to think of the first person that comes to mind when I make this description. So the first person is, I want you to think of somebody who's literally revolutionized the computer industry, not only in what we think about technology, but how we use technology. Okay, go ahead and open your eyes. How many of you thought about Steve Jobs? Okay, yeah, it, it, there's no right or wrong answer to this particular question, because you could have thought about Bill Gates or Larry Ellison, but certainly these are people who are titans of the technology world. Okay, let's do another one. This time I want you to think about somebody in politics. Uh, politics was actually his second career, and he was probably the most talked about governor in the state of California's history. There's probably a clue. You can open your eyes. Um, how many of you thought about this individual, Arnold Schwarzenegger? Okay. You know, depending on your generation, you might have even thought about Ronald Reagan. Uh, you know, he, politics was his second career as well, but I don't think you could confuse Bedtime for Bonzo with the Terminator movies. So <laughs> let, let, let's do one last one. Now, this time, I want you to think about somebody in local government. Um, and in this case, somebody who gained notoriety not for what he did good in government, but what he did bad in government. In fact, this week, you might have even read about him in the Los Angeles Times or some other uh, news uh, agency. Uh, this individual was sentenced to 33 months in federal prison for tax evasion, uh, 12 years in state prison for stealing money. So, okay, open your eyes. How many of you thought about this individual, Robert Rizzo? Now, you might not have known him by his name, Robert Rizzo. You might have known him by the city that he was a city manager of, the city of Bell. This is a largely Latino working class community in uh, the downtown Los Angeles area. And the city of Bell in and of itself is not a bad place, but they had a bad city manager, a bad administrator. And people who already had bad opinions about government, this just confirmed their worst fears. And those that didn't really think about their local government all that much, well, they started asking questions like, well, geez, if it happened in Bell, maybe it happened, it's happening in my community as well. But it's not. I can tell you just myself, I'm the assistant city manager here in Santa Clarita, right here in California. Um, I've served as an assistant to the city manager, a deputy city manager. I've even held the title of city manager in another Southern California city. And my experience is that the people who work in local government on a daily basis are very proud of what they do. I've worked with police officers who, who take great pride in keeping their community safe. I've worked with fire officials who save lives on a daily basis. Public works staff who are building bridges and roads and libraries. Parks and recreation staff who are delivering basketball and football programs to young kids who are experiencing sports for the very first time. And that's happening all around us every day. But you never read about it. What you read about is individuals like Robert Rizzo. Because the old media adage that if it bleeds, it, it, it leads, that was certainly true in this case. I equated a little bit to the airline industry, the commercial airline industry. Last year, 2013, there were 826 million people who got on board a, a commercial flight. 200, or 826 million people, that's almost a billion people just here in the United States. And every time there's an airline accident, people start to talk about reform and whether or not it's even safe to travel on commercial airlines. And that's simply not the case. It's probably one of the most safe forms of transportation that we know. 
you have a better chance of getting in an accident driving your car from this venue today. But yet, an airline accident causes people to think differently about a situation or an issue. And in the city of Bell's case and, and, and Robert Rizzo, he was the equivalent of the city, in the city management profession of an airline accident. ICMA, which is the International City County Manager Association, pegs a number about 19,000. There are 19,000 cities and counties in the United States. What that tells me is that there are infinitely more cities doing good things than bad things. But yet, all you're hearing about is the bad things. Because that's what sells newspapers, and that's what gets headlines, and that's what people want to see in the evening news. But every day, as I already mentioned, there are so many good things happening all around us. Now, this wasn't always the case, admittingly. City government, quite frankly, at the uh, end of the 19th century, going into the 20th century, was corrupt, very corrupt. All the eastern coast cities were uh, run by political bosses who bought and sold votes, and you know, they, they, were, they gave friends, family, and relatives sweet contracts to build those bridges and libraries. And they were enriching themselves at the expense of people like you, citizens of communities and residents, and it was a really bad time in government. People started getting fed up with that, as you can only imagine. It was a really tough time in city government. And some of you that remember your history books, even in like New York, you might remember the Tammany Hall and how they controlled everything that happened in New York at the time. Well, right about 1887, well, actually at 1887, uh, this was the end of, like I said, the end of the 19th century, going into the 20th century. There was a young professor at Princeton University uh, by the name of Woodrow Wilson. And yes, that would be the same Woodrow Wilson that would become eventually president of Princeton University, become the governor of New Jersey, and then eventually become the president of the United States. And those of you that know your uh, history and presidents would know that he was the 28th president of the United States. Well, at the time, in 1887, as a professor, he wrote what became the seminal paper on good government. He came up with this idea, given the era, and it was groundbreaking and paradigm shifting, and it's still the roadmap that we use today in local government. And that is, he talked about politics, and he talked about administration. And he wrote the paper and said this, and he referred to it as the politics and administration dichotomy. And what he meant by that is politicians didn't have to be administrators, and administrators didn't have to be politicians. There could be a separate class of professional administrators that were trained in the science of management that could run our cities. It was about 1914, in the same era, that the International City County Manager Association was formed. It was unique for the day because it was the first of its kind to support these professional managers that would go on and manage city governments. This structure that they were going to use was they ripped a page right out of the corporate handbook. City councils would look like, would, could be like boards of directors. And city managers could be like chief executive officers. And we could separate the politics from the day-to-day -day decision making. And that became the norm in city government. City managers became the keepers of the reform of that era. And it was the first time that residents, citizens, just like you, started to get an appetite for that reform. It was the first time you heard terms like initiative and referendum, uh, because so many people got jobs and sweet contracts through, uh, uh, through friends and relatives and, and that worked in government and, and were enriching themselves. The civil service system was born during that era as well. And so to this day, city managers are doing the good deeds, and this profession has evolved over 100 years. And there is a lot of good that's come out of it. And we're very different at the local level than we are at the state level or even the federal level. We can do things that they can't do. And so we bring good government on a regular basis to you, the, the citizens that we serve. And let me give you some examples. We're the most transparent level of government. And this is what you need to look for in your communities so that you can see the good in government. In Santa Clarita, for instance, if you go to our website, you can see virtually and get virtually anything that you want about the city government, about our government agency. You can get budgets, you can get uh, planning documents, you can get 
uh, agendas for council meetings. You can even find out what happened at the last, last council meeting. You can find out what events are happening in the community. And if you can't get it there, we have Facebook accounts and Twitter accounts. We're using all the technology of the day to get information to our, our residents. And if you don't get it there on a monthly or weekly or daily basis, you can also come down to a city council meeting. For three minutes, you can talk to all five elected officials and the city manager will be sitting there, the assistant manager will be sitting there, and all the directors will be sitting there, and you can ask questions, uh, give commentary, you can basically say whatever you want. If, name me another level of government where that's possible. And it's not that far away. In your community, you can just go down to your local city hall and do this. So we're the most transparent level of government. We're also one of the most ethical levels of government, and I'll tell you why. The dynamics that happened at local governments during that era, some of it did happen at the state and the federal level, because they have civil service systems and what have you. But what's interesting about the local government level is that we have professional organizations. I had mentioned the 19,000 cities in uh, the United States, cities and counties. Of those, 10,000 of those cities claim to have a council manager form of government. And that is that shared governance model where there's councils who hire city managers. And of those 10,000, we all belong to professional organizations. And those that don't have council manager form of governments, they have some form of that with a professional administrator at the helm. And we follow a code of ethics. Many of our professional organizations require that we do. Many of us essentially take that oath. We go into government because we have this intrinsic desire to help communities. And so the profession and the managing of cities has completely changed. We're a very highly ethical level of government. Our, our credo is that we are ethical and we're productive with the resources and the tax dollars that we spend. Which leads me to my next point. We spend money in ways that many of you aren't even aware of. And let me give you an example of that. Right here in Santa Clarita, right here in Los Angeles County, there's 88 cities. Of those 88 cities, 47 of those cities, over half contract police services. Now you're wondering, what does that have to do with good government? Well, I'll tell you. We're constantly looking at ways to spend money more efficiently. That's what we do. That's what we went to school for. That's what all our experience tells us. That's what we are essentially geared to do in local government, and we do it every day. And so with our police services, for instance, it would be more expensive for us to actually bring those services in-house. So in Santa Clarita, we value parks and recreation. We value it so much that we spend as much on park or, parks and recreation as we do on police services. And we wouldn't be able to do that if we had to bring those services in-house. If we had to bring police services in-house, it would be at the expense of something else. And we don't want to do that. So we found a way to do both at a very high level. And we don't just do that for police services. We do it for parks and recreation. We do it for libraries. We do it for public works projects. We're constantly looking at the most efficient way to deliver those services. And that's our charge. That's what we think about. That's what I labor in with all day sitting in my office, is thinking about how to more efficiently spend those tax dollars so ultimately we can serve you, the residents of the communities that we serve. And then the last one really is the most important one in my opinion. It's the engagement. Government is about engagement. The original framers of the Constitution talked about government for the people and by the people, and no place else in government, at the state or local, or at the federal level, will you find it more so than at the local level. We want to engage you. In fact, we appreciate it. As city managers and the profession of city management is we want to hear from you. We don't want to make those decisions in a silo. We want to hear what is on your minds. And we try to do that in the most efficient way possible. And, and no time in history is it more possible because we live in the digital age. Information is literally at our fingertips. In Santa Clarita alone, we have almost 6,000 Facebook followers. We have almost 6,000 Twitter followers. And so we're constantly pushing information out through social media. In fact, 
the League of California Cities, which is the organization that most cities in the state of California belong to, there's other similar leagues in other states, and there's even a national league of cities. But right here in California, the League of California Cities estimates that 50% of the cities in California are using some form of social media. They're connecting in non-traditional ways with residents in their communities. And that's important, because that was the original idea behind this whole democracy that we set up. You can come down to a city council meeting and see 25, 30 people in the audience. And some of them are participating, some of them are commenting about different uh, agenda items. But at the same time, we have 6,000 people that are following us in some other form. And that's how we reach out to communities. It's non-traditional, but it's just as effective nonetheless. And we can do that on a monthly basis, on a weekly basis, on an hourly basis. And in the case of an emergency, we can do it on a minute-by-minute -minute basis. The world is changing, and it's changing for the better, because we're able to serve our residents in a way that nobody had ever dreamed of, but with technology, we're able to reach out in ways that we never even thought about, and who knows what the future is going to bring. But I can tell you this, cities who are reaching out to, their, to the communities that they serve, and the professional administrators who do that. Are the, these, place, these cities are not just geographic places on a map. They're places where the engaged citizenry work with professional managers to solve problems locally. And that's why it's so exciting, because it's happening literally every day. And that's what I wanted to share with you today. You can see it happening all around you. You just have to know what to look for and where to look for it. So go spread that gospel. Look for those things in your own community. And now, hopefully, you can see the good in government. Thank you.